Okay, so here's the game we're going to play. We're going to talk portal, and I'm going to go position by position. And I'm going to actually write this down because I'm kind of curious what everybody thinks on this. I want to go position by position and whether or not we think Texas needs to go to the portal for help and how many guys in the portal for help they need to go. So starting at quarterback, everybody, what do we got? Yes or no's and going to the portal for a quarterback. Yes. Anwar? Yes, because you'll probably lose one. Alex? No. So is it just a yes or no, or is it a number? Yeah, it's just yes or no. Yes. <laughs> that's okay. an obvious. If, you have, if you're thinking more than one, that's an obvious yes. Does anybody think they need to go more than one? That's the next question. I don't think that would even work. You're not going to probably get two guys from the portal to transfer in. So, I think they may have to, Alex, but it really depends on – what happens with the recruiting class? Do they lose? If they lose both Hudson Card and Casey Thompson, which is – that's on the table. That is – that's not a long shot. If they do, I think they'll have to go get two. And one would probably have to be an older guy. That You know, the, the one thing about the portal, a year ago at the quarterback position, there were more guys than there were chairs. So – when August rolled around, there were actually a lot of guys that had significant starting experience. They weren't good players, but they were guys that had played a lot of football and been failed starters at other schools that didn't land in places. And you could probably get a guy like that to come in and say, hey, it's a spot. And last year, there were legitimate guys that could be backup quarterbacks with experience. I'm thinking like in the NFL where – there are total schmoes that are backup quarterbacks just because, you know, there aren't enough good quarterbacks go around running back position. We're all a no, I think, right. Nobody's going to say put resources there. Correct. No. Okay. Wide receiver. Anybody think that you use a spot? I'll say yes. Anybody else think that they need to use a spot at receiver in the portal? I'm kind of, first off, it depends on how they recruit the rest of this class. Evan Stewart. I got you. Um, But, you know, I'm assuming Troy and Mary is going to be healthy next year. So I'm saying, no, I don't think they have to go get a receiver. in the. Can you really assume that? No, but he's two years out from his injury. So I would, I would sure as hell hope so, but, uh, yeah, it's not, not the safest assumption, but I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and Whittington, Worthy, you know. Uh, I don't think they need to go portal at receiver. Alex? Unknown caller. Well, O'Meary, what, Washington? Did, isn't Woodard going to walk for senior day? Sounds like it, although I just don't know because the list that they – it's possible based on the way that they listed it in the, in the game notes this week, but then – John pretty much acted like he wasn't sure about any of the names on that list. And even if they walk on senior day, they can come back. I mean, Anwar had a list of guys. Wasn't it you, Anwar, that had the list earlier this week? Somebody uh, came up. Somebody posted it. Somebody posted. I mean, you know, Tope Amade walked last year and Kerstetter. There's like five or six guys. So it's not like it precludes them from coming back. Worthy. I mean, Casey Kane. Dejon Harris. I don't, I don't know if Dejon Harrison is going to be back. Um, Jordan Alexis. Is Jordan Alex- Jaden Alexis? Jaden Alexis. Yeah, he's injured. Okay. Um, so he'll be back. I think you might. And Jason, just refresh my memory. Who are the wide receivers in the 2022 committed? Is, is Winfield still committed? Yes. Yeah, for now. Um, <laughs> him and Brennan, Brennan Thompson are the two that they have currently. So. Yeah, so Portal. You'd, go, you'd use a spot. Yep. They're looking to bring in a couple more, but they've got two. Anwar, what about you? Just to finish yes, this? I okay. would definitely do it. Just, 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 to, just to safeguard yourself. Totally agree. Uh, tight ends? I would say no. I mean, I mean, you got a five-star the- tight end on the bench. Like, if you can't, if you can't utilize him, I mean, what? Who else are you going to utilize? Juan Davis is a guy in addition to J- Tavian Sanders. Plus, you've got Braden Lybrock. I don't know if he sticks it out. But he's there, and you have Gunner Helm. Like, yeah, on paper, that should be an incredible room. 
Well, they yeah. might not even take one in the recruiting class. So I don't think that's pressing need for, for them right now. It had to be a hell of a guy like that kid that ended up leaving LSU, but couldn't figure out. Remember he had, a, who was the guy last year? The Yeah. I don't remember where he wound up. He was going to go to Florida. And yeah. He had five, out. that guy, unless it's a talent level like that, at which point, why would uh, he go to Texas at this point? All right, we don't have Alex for this, so it's just the three of us. Now we're on the offensive line. We all agree they got to go into the portal for offensive line. What's your number? As many as possible. <laughs> <laughs> There's no limit. There's no uh, limit. What's your minimum then, I guess? Minimum two. Uh, yeah. I think two to three is probably most likely, yeah. Yeah, I three's the number in my head on war. Yeah, I, I'd want three with the hope that you hit on two, you know, is you know, just two I, starters I just, and one solid depth guy. Yeah, just just in case just in case you get him here and he just it doesn't pan out for whatever reasons, give yourself a cushion, but I would go three easily. Defensive tackle, I'm probably at a no just because I know the numbers are going to get tight and we've got more on the defensive side of the ball to have to replace. Does anybody, you know, and they're taking a bunch of guys and yeah, recruiting yeah. this year too. Right. I was about to say, they got a bunch of kind of combo defensive and defensive tackles. So um, probably not. I would think, I think again, there's better places you can focus. So here's the edge rusher position, which has been, you know, an Achilles heel for them all season long. What are you doing there? They got to take one. The question is, is do they, do you double dip? Is it like offense? You know, there's a part of me that thinks they may treat this again, like they did linebacker in this position a year ago that they, they threw the kitchen sink at it. And he described it on Monday as a problem on the level of the offensive line. They're going to go get multi. I know they have this big recruiting class. So, you know, they'll have guys that they can implement into that spot. But what, Jason, what would you do there at the edge spot? Yeah, you know, I'm looking at their commitment list. They've got a couple guys that kind of fall into that role. Well, three, really, I guess. Anthony Jones would be the third. Um, I don't know. I'm a little gun shy because you've tried it before and it hasn't worked out. So, but I, I guess, yeah, you probably have if, – if you think it's a true difference maker, don't take any reaches. But if you think there's somebody you, you were really confident can, that can come in and be a starter for you, be a plus player, then, yeah, I'd probably take one. Anwar, I'm thinking two. What about you? Two. I, you took it right there, two. Yeah. I, I, I just think, it, again, give yourself a cushion. I mean, just – you can't – you know, the wide receiver one is I, – I take one just because you've got other guys, so it's fine. But this one, in, in the position of need – I would definitely do too. Linebacker. This is an interesting one because I guess Jalen Ford, you know what I mean? We think about who they've got coming back. I don't know that there's anybody on the team that I would think they definitely want to start. I would think that they could literally go to any linebacker that they would want to recruit and say, you could walk in and start for us. Cause I don't think, unlike a year ago where it was like, well, you guys have DeMarvion Overshone. So there's one spot that's kind of taken up. Would you take one? Would you take two? Would you take none? I mean, it's, um, I, I am like you, Jason, this is a little bit of the space where I'm a little bit scarred from this past year. It's like, Ooh, <laughs> I don't know how many linebackers they should take considering that it didn't work real well this year. Yeah, and they don't have a lot in this 2022 class. I'm looking back, like, at 2021. I mean, you lost uh, – Terrence Cook's already transferred. Mo Blackwell's playing more of a safety role. Uh, Derek Harris is more of an edge lineman at this point. Um, man, the problem is, that if we keep saying yes, we're going to run out of numbers. Well, that's that's the thing. That's why this, that's I'm doing this whole exercise. So, um, I mean, I guess you probably have to – Take one, at least one, and then it doesn't leave you anything for the defensive backfield. But, yeah, I guess you probably do have to take take one linebacker if it's – again, if it's a – but don't take a reach. It needs to be a difference maker. It's funny, Anwar, two's in my head. 
<laughs> because you lose the Marvion, right? More than likely, we're assuming yeah. you lose the Marvion. Um, he was the best of the linebackers. So you got to find someone who, okay, who's who's replacing him? And you've had, uh, you know, some, there's, I think there's some, some good depth that's at that position, but yeah, I, I would definitely, I, w- I can definitely do too on, on that for sure. I mean, just, you've got to, especially the way this defense is set up, catch with, you know, one of those tackles that kind of just, you know, hold a couple of guys and the guys behind them make plays. Like you've got to have some guys, especially quicker sideline to sideline. So I, I'd, I'd easily take two. You just, just because you didn't hit the last time doesn't mean you stop playing. You know, that's, that's that's the kind of the gambler's motto, right? You go. Yeah, you never have fun in blackjack if you just gave up after the first <laughs> few hands. Uh, this I game isn't going. for me. Uh, secondary. Yeah, they lose everybody except for Jaron Thompson. Other than that, I guess Jade Barron has started to play more in the last couple of weeks, but Look I don't good. know. Look good, I, I know. Not great. I don't know that I view him as a long-term starter yet. Like he just, he's, he's playing. He's just not, I wouldn't say playing extremely well. Um, they didn't God. take a deep class last year. They're, they've got three committed this year, but none of them are what I would call probably instant impact players. You know, maybe if they get a Denver Harris, that changes things, but the guys they have committed, they're probably not, you know, guys are going to want to throw out their day one. Um, Again, I mean, I would say yes, but I know we're going to be way over whatever her yeah. available number is. So you're going to, have to scale some of these back at some point, but that and honestly, Jason, that's where I'm headed. Like, once we get our total list of numbers, um, which I'm going to put two DBs down. Everybody good with that for the sake of? Does Darian Dunn have another year? What? Darian Dunn? Can he come back? No, because he didn't. He doesn't have a COVID year to use. He sat out last year. And he, this was his last year, so okay. he doesn't get a freebie. He's not even eligible for it. Okay. Uh, Onward, do you have any problem with that? You know, you don't have to. I mean, if you if you tell me if there was one position that you know if we had to take something from, I would take it away from the DB position because if you solve the issues up front, and, and at least with that front seven, that probably helps those guys out a little bit more. So I would be a little lenient there. So I, I'd be okay if you even took one, but two is fine. Well, if we took the minimum number at each position that we talked about, so one quarterback, one wide receiver, two offensive linemen for now, that's four, one edge is five, one linebacker is six, two DBs is eight. Suddenly, if you can take 33 guys, that's your max right there. And if you want to take an extra offensive lineman or you want to take an extra edge player, you're going to have to – Cut that somewhere. So, you know, and we didn't even talk about the kicker position where it looks like Cameron Dicker is going to participate on senior day on Saturday. That doesn't preclude him from coming back. He could. I mean, um, they may need to take a kicker in the portal too. I know that there's been some talk even this week about the kid from Austin that they've got in this recruiting class being Will Stone being a guy that's had a good year. I'm always a little, you know, it's funny on where back in Max days, the way they would handle kicker Mackie, when Mac first showed up, Mac was offering kickers every year and missing on them. So then what he started doing was inviting six walk-ons to battle it out every summer. And then the guy that would win that battle would probably end up being the starter and going on scholarship. I'm surprised that, Maybe Texas doesn't try that this year. That they've already got guys. They got Stone, and they'll have uh, the Auburn kid from last year. The and Pearson, Isaac Pearson. Honor, but yeah, uh, so I mean, in terms of scholarships dedicated to the the kicking part of the game, they're already at a place that's about as high as you want to go. Um, I mean, quite frankly, you shouldn't take Will Stone in the recruiting class if you feel like you've got to go get a senior, then you probably should have, I'm just nothing against Will Stone. I'm just saying in general, the way I think most colleges treat the kicking position is a lot of times you go year by year. And if you think you've got to use one potentially on a transfer, probably don't go get a high school kid, but 
what do I know? Um, they're going to... They're going to have to be very conscientious about how they use these scholarships. The, unlike a year ago, I don't think you can take a a flyer on a kid and hope. I mean, there's got to be a real specific plan for each of these guys. Because, again, we, I think all of us were looking at the numbers and thinking guys that can come in and play slash start slash contribute right away – and they didn't quite do that a year ago. I mean, Keelan Robinson, as much as I think we all like him, is a bit of a luxury. They could certainly have used another offensive lineman more than a third string running back, even if he comes back next year and is still kind of third string running back. I just, the question was simply <laughs> yes. Uh, well, I asked it, it was the need to just be more careful. And you know, honestly, when they make their calls will be really interesting, right? Because it will be a bird in the hand versus two in the bush. Guy comes available. Your your Ray Thornton becomes available in February. And it's like, ooh, is this the guy we want to take? Or do we think that we can get something better later in the portal? But you never completely know. I mean, guys will be coming into the portal in March and April and May, and you want to give yourself room, but you do have to make decisions before that. I don't think you can wait up. I, I would assume most, probably most guys will enter in late December, January, I would think. Um, you may, you'll have some, of course, in the spring, like you said, but uh, that's, that's playing Russian roulette. You're, if you're Texas, you can't afford to wait. I don't think you, you got to grab what's there in, in January, probably. Yeah, especially if you, I mean, four or five win season, like you, you, you don't, to point, Jason, you don't have that luxury. You, you've got to get, you've got to get those bodies in uh, for your winter conditioning program, your spring ball, like as much as you can get them on campus and get them ready for the coming season. You know, you can't afford to sit around and say, well, we'll wait until such and such because who's just, there's no guarantee that that person's actually going to come to your program. We're, we're assuming that, all these transfers are going to want to come to a program that might finish. I'm eight. not, <laughs> I mean, I'm they not have assuming a anything. You know, they still have to recruit these guys and win these recruiting battles. So yeah. you know, we'll, we'll see. Um, last question. Then we'll go into parting shots. Yes or no. You have faith that this coaching staff will have a proper and like detailed plan for how to approach the portal going into this off season. Jason. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, I, this, they feel pretty organized in terms of their roster development. I mean, they haven't hit on the guys they brought in necessarily, but I don't think they're going to just go into it uh, flying blind, so to speak. So yeah, I think they'll have a, a plan now being able to execute that plan may be easier said than done, but I think they'll have a plan. Ask it one more time. Is, you do I have faith that they'll are be you, able to? Do you think? Are you confident that they'll have a structured plan and will be able to essentially pull it off? Not at this moment. You know, Sorry, I, I, do I? It's it, it, one. I think it's too fresh for me. You know, we're we're sitting it as we're recording this. This is a four win team in the midst of a six game losing streak where we're looking at voids, you know, throughout the field and looking at, you know, things that could have been done totally differently. And we just spent the, you know, the time talking about guys that they brought in that didn't necessarily have the impact for me, you know, I, I extended that kind of that, that measure of, um, of grace or whatever the word I'm looking for, where I said, okay, all right, I I believe, I believe, I believe. And now I'm like, okay, just show me, you know? And, and when you show me, then I'll totally give you your props at that point. But right now, I don't know what I'd be basing my belief that and saying I, I'm 100% I'm convinced it's going to happen. I don't know what I'd be basing that on other than blind faith. And I gave him, I had that blind faith before the season. I can't do that again. I agree with you, Anwar. I think my reasoning is slightly different. I think my, my concern is twofold. One, the portal is so new that it's not as easy as apply the thing that worked at your previous school. I mean, it's not even like he can lean on what Saban used to do in the portal as a strategy because 
it didn't really exist in the way that it did until very recently. So this is all very new. And I don't know that Sarkeesian or anybody on this staff, that this is their natural thing. And I think it kind of played out a little bit a year ago when it was like, oh yeah, Ben Davis, we saw that guy at Alabama and like, he's got to be better than what they have here at Texas. And right. You know, they like, I just don't know that they're creative enough yet and have all their bases covered from a scouting standpoint that will allow them. Uh, Cause if it, yeah, I don't know. I just, they haven't done this yet. And until they do it, there's only a couple of guys in the world, right? There's only, other, we all keep saying Mel Tucker's name. It's because nobody else knows anybody that's really gone through the portal and been able to turn a program around. I guess Dave Aranda, to a certain extent, was able to do a lot of what he did at Baylor this year by having success in the portal. Uh, kudos you know, to about that. Juco, too. I mean, they still could go Juco and get some of those guys. Juco's man. trash. Yeah, K-State lived on that for years, man. You can Yeah, but they players. did like 20 years ago. Like, that was, yeah. I feel like the Juco thing as a whole – has really washed out the what when you and I were in college, not what Jason. It used to be, but yeah, you can still find. I mean, Desmond Harrison was a JUCO player who was, he didn't screw up. Was starting in the NFL as a rookie. So where's <laughs> Did you Alex? Just bring up Desmond. Yeah, where, where's Alex? Where's Alex? Alex? Oh, poor Alex. <laughs> poor Alex. He missed the Desmond Harrison portion of the podcast. You can find talent at the JUCO level. I think at the offensive line, especially. So I mean. I, I think my concern on the JUCO is just so random. I mean, I can't tell you that the portal hits at better rates than JUCOs, but it can't be that bad. JUCO is so scattershot. And even guys that hit, Desmond Harrison, I think, is kind of a perfect example, right? Has the talent to be an NFL player, but they rarely come in in year one and have smooth transitions. It almost always feels like they've gone from earth to Mars and are trying to figure out an entirely different solar system. Uh, What concerns me about Juco is I'm, I'm concerned about any kid that's there (laughs) that their high school didn't skew their grades or change around their grades to make them college eligible. Like that every high school will be like, Oh no, no. What would you get in Spanish? What do you need? Yes. You have a B that yes, you're, Go ahead and go on. We want you to be successful and and have like if they don't love you enough to cheat on your grades, like I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. This it's kind of- fair, Anwar. I can remember someone at my school. I was basically telling me whatever I needed to get the hell on up out of here, they would do because they just didn't want to ever see me again. <laughs> <laughs> so whether it's love or hate or whatever. Like you gotta have some sort of connection of like. Let's so people sure. have hated you since a young age. Is that what you've been saying? <laughs> no, Miss Bryant loved me in her own way. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I think that was more about absences than grades, but none of the points still there. Uh, let's go into parting shots. Anwar, I will let you go first. Yeah. I realize it is that time of the year. I'm going to keep my mouth shut in the event that you have something. No. Really sentimental and sweet. I am not going to say a word. No. So, okay, listen, I had something happen to me two times last week, and this is for the fellas. And this would be, it's not Thanksgiving related, but allow me to give you guys some advice here. Two times last week, Catch, whether I was in the airport or in the press box, I walked into the urinals, walked into the bathroom, and at the urinal, there's a guy with his pants dropped down to his knees at the urinal, showing his ass, straight, just booty in your freaking face. I have seen this twice. I've seen it other times. I This is my plea to those guys who feel like you have to drop it down in order, down to your knees in order to use, use the urinal. First of all, how freaking old are you? Okay, because my little kids know how to just pull it down. Second of all, in order to do this, right, you have to be able to spread your legs. So you're you're, you're dropping it down and spreading it around around your knees to hold it so you can hold it in place in order to release. 
I'm saying, just saying to you, don't drop it down. No one wants to see your ass catch. When I walked into the airport one, it's like two sides, right? There's your nose to the left and your nose to the right. And no one wanted to go to the ones on the right because dude's ass was showing the entire time. And every dude was like, nah, I'll just stay on this line over here. No one wants to go over here, right? I peeked around the corner. I was able to find something a few stalls down. I've seen this multiple times. I'm, I'm, I'm begging you. If you, if you got to, if you got to drop it all the way down to pee, go into the stall. Cause yeah. no one wants to see your ass, man. Like you are not at home. You're not around company. This is not your kingdom. This is not your domain. I don't want to see your ass at all ever again. Fellas, if you got to drop them, go to the stall, because if not, you're just nasty. You're nasty. Your mama didn't raise you right. Your daddy didn't raise you right. No one loves you. No one hugged you as a kid. Stop it. I hate it. I don't want to see your ass when I go to pee. That's all I got. That's my partner shot. Happy Thanksgiving. You know, it would seem to me that at the very least, it gives you a story. Yeah, it's you a know, gross one. So, like, if you're at a restaurant, let's say, although it sounds like you're at the airport all the time. Yeah. Where, where is this happening? Is this in the airport? There's two. It's, it happened two places. It happened in the airport, and it happened in the West Virginia press box. Ugh. So you just walk it in. You're like, oh, let me go ahead and use the restroom. And you're like, yo, whoa, dude. Why? Why? This is so you were you were in West Virginia, so what do you think the psychological <laughs> profile of guy who drops his pants? I'm thinking military, like because all my friends that have ever been in the military don't they don't care. I mean, they'll just they'll they'll drop trowel at a moment's notice because that's kind of the how they had to do it in the military. And then prison is the only other thing I can think of. <laughs> Well, these are, they, they were, they're older gentlemen, you know, but it's, it's as simple. It's, it's, oh, she's drop, oldies. it's drop, spread, release, drop, yeah. spread, release. You drop it down a little bit, spread your legs. So you can hold your pants up, release. And I'm, I'm surprised I have to tell fellas how to do this. Drop, spread, release. Both of these okay? guys drop, are old spread, guys. Release. Huh? Both times old people. Yes, older people. Oh, yes. I mean, you just running into a situation where old people just don't care. Yeah, they don't give a shit. Yeah. I don't they literally see don't care that you think they're dirty. Nah. Like, they just, you're talking about people that have reached an age. They're just going to do whatever they want to do. And in this case, that's when they go to a public urinal, pull it all the way down. That's just gross to me because that would feel like I'm getting my clothes yeah, right. on the dirty just even in the area of the dirty floor where I know other guys have pissed on the floor. Like it's the least sanitary place in the world is the floor right under the urinals. I'm not trying to volunteer any of my possessions close to that area. Just in general, men in, in the men's room are just gross in general. I mean, I was in one yesterday. I wanted HEB. I had to use restroom. Some dude walks in and he's, Drinking out of the water faucet in the bathroom. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, what? I didn't what? say it, but I'm like, what? Yeah, he's just splashing water and drinking it. And I'm like, <laughs> oh what the God. hell? Like, I don't even carry a drink. If I have a drink and it's sealed, I won't even carry it into the restroom because yeah, no. it's going to pick up germs. So, yeah, he's drinking water out of the water <laughs> faucet. <laughs> and I'm standing there to wash, wash my hands and waiting on this jackass. And I'm like, the HEB in Georgetown or something? It's a brand new one. They just opened up north of my house on Ronald Reagan. So I was, that I is to check out fantastic. That's excitement in my life. And lo and behold, that's I don't I even know if I need to do a, a parting shot after that. But Jason, you, the floor is yours. I don't have much, man. I'm just going to wish everybody happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving has become one of my favorite holidays now that because Texas plays on Friday because it's it's actually a day off and I get to spend it with my family and my brother and his wife and kids are coming down. And with COVID, man, we, they're up in the Dallas area. We haven't seen them much. So I'm um, really looking forward to, well, I'm going to see them today, in, in fact, and then obviously tomorrow for Thanksgiving. So looking forward to a good Thanksgiving and hope everybody else has a great Thanksgiving and uh, everybody stays safe if they're traveling. Yeah, I will echo exactly that. And old dudes, pull your pants up. Don't eat sandwiches in the bathroom and don't drink out of the urinal faucets. Like, Anwar, maybe you, we've all contributed to a really important PSA for all of America that partakes in the... What's funny is 
somebody's going to watch the video that drops their trial and shows ass in public urinals. And they're going to watch this video and they're going to think to, to themselves, oh, God, did Anwar see me? You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's very possible. It's not out of the realm of possibilities, Anwar, that someone that has exposed them backside to you uh, will we'll watch this video and learn their lesson. What up, fellas? <laughs> Tell everybody happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> you too, guys. You too. I want to do like the Tiny Tim. And each and every one. Uh, fellas, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, do all that stuff. We will see you guys on Saturday for the final post-game show of the year. Until then, happy Thanksgiving. Later. <laughs>